Good afternoon, at least it's, it's from my part of the world, it's still morning. So good morning to everybody. And today, my name as was introduced is Amelia Ampofu. I'm working with MT in Ghana and I'm a customer analytics senior manager. My background is actually geographic information systems specific for business and service planning. So today I'll be sharing with you some our journey on how GIS has evolved for us as a telco. And of course, you'll be able to pick some best practice that will help in whichever area you're finding yourself in within the utilities, about specifically telco. So as was introduced, I'll be sharing with you for MTN in particular. For those of you who know MTN Ghana, our vision is to lead the delivery of a bold new digital world to our customers. And our purpose is to make our customers' lives a whole lot brighter. Today, as we all know, telecom has become part and parcel of everything that we do. So by this, we are inspired by the belief that everyone deserves the benefits of a well, of a modern connected life. Why are we saying that? When we look at most of the things that we are doing today, from digital to enterprise business solutions, to voice, data, FinTech, name it, you realize that all throughout our respective countries, there's the need to roll out to everyone. Yes, there might be different segments, but everyone needs the benefits of this modern connected life. And so for us at MTN, we ensure that we apply the right sets of tools to unearth these insights. One of which is the geographic information systems, specifically the ESRI set of GIS tools. So I'll be running with, through a few of them with you. And then at the end, I'll specifically explain some of our best practice. But the whole idea, as you can see from the map of Ghana, is to ensure that we roll out the right products at the right place and for the right purpose. Our evolution. Very often, people start off a GIS on a heavy side. They might start big and then they get stuck. But our story began years ago, specifically 2009 when we were evolving from a 2G technology to 3G technology. I recall we're just under 10 million customers at that time. So at that time, the GIS that we were applying was purely a system of records. Being able to understand our resources, our KPIs, our revenue, our customer base by specific location and then being able to roll out specific technology. So pretty much we were doing static map kind of GIS. And then, so the, these, these were guiding uh, most of the departments. At this time, it was specifically from network into commercial. So in between was, let's call it, I wouldn't call it a, a GIS unit, because this was geo-marketing and it was a function within marketing, which was the core of the business. So what it just means that, and for those of you in telco, you would appreciate that marketing is the heart of the telecom business in that the bridge between the production from the network side to the customer. So indeed we needed a lot of information and specific to location. So that's how we started sharing um, maps that will guide the decision making, especially marketing and then the sales team. But as we carried on into 2017, we realized that we were evolving most of our sales agents and other applications. We are now gotten into um, mobile money expansion, trying to include more people in the FinTech 
area. We are this time trying to empower our field teams with the right tools to get onto the field. And the only way to now evolve what we had as the static maps was to introduce our RGIS online solution. For me, it was timely in the sense that we were not, we, we, we had prepared or built a very good foundation at the desktop level. So with the onset or the incoming of ArcGIS online solution, rather than create static maps and probably send by PDF to the commercial teams, this time around, we were able to share the applications on the collector app. So field teams could now share and visualize whatever priorities we had designed for them. So not only was collector being used to visualize, but it was also allowing the field teams, whenever they were on the field and they needed to collect some insights. You know, when you're in competitive environment, you need to collect a lot of insights. It also allowed them to collect insights. So for us, it was a great evolution. So remember how we started in 2009, by 2017, we had gone to the online level. Then big data environment was also building up. We needed to do more analytics. It meant that we had to connect a lot more information. So by this time, we had moved from a standalone, just in marketing, you know, when you collect the information from the network planning team, and then you commercialize it for the, the sales and marketing team, you would now need to visualize. So now we needed more information, especially across the business. Now people in customer care also needed information. Where was the network down or where is the net next um, site coming up? When you talk about the finance team, if they are justifying some areas or prioritizing how do you give them a quick visual impression? So now we needed more information. And that was when the enterprise deployment also set in. So now with our big data platform, we're able to connect seamlessly into the enterprise environment. And the whole idea was to get more data to be able to do more analysis. So you see subsequently when I carry on some of the applications that we carried on. So like most of you in the telco um, sector, you'd appreciate that demographic data is critical, especially when as governments, as the regulator, they are you to ensure that rollout is to every part of the country. How else could you do that than to collect the population of demographic data into a system that would allow you to do end-to-end -end analysis? Then you know also know that wireless coverage information and all other network assets also are sitting elsewhere. Then even the mobile devices. So I mentioned how we had evolved from 2G, 3G, and even into the 4G. So now you're moving in from voice into data and you're trying to understand which demographic or segments would be um, applicable or, or the, the, the opportunity for the network rollout. So it became very critical. So by the time we migrated, now the focus was, look, let's put more data into our GIS and then make it more um, in, in, in an advanced analytics approach of understanding uh, markets. So this made us go steps ahead of understanding our markets and then what else needed to be done. And this was the collector for our GIS story. So the evolution continues. And as I mentioned, we moved from the collector environment. Now we had gone into the enterprise application environment. And here, this was the exciting part because for years we had just been on the desktop and therefore we're now into the online part and then we introduced Pro gradually. So it wasn't like we invested everything at one time, but there was a gradual process. And if we compare how previously we were sharing maps to how now we had gotten to an environment of dashboards, that was what started attracting people. Now at the executive level, Collector became an application that was easy to understand for executives. So just on the phone, they click an app 
and they can visualize. It was funny to hear some of them saying that, yes, whilst they're in town, some people are asking, oh, I don't have coverage in my area, or they had whatever issue it was. They were quickly able to navigate the app and then show to others where next we'll be rolling out. So it gave a lot of accessibility at the executive level. It also empowered and gave accessibility to other functions. So imagine dashboards across the business, customer care had dashboards, and this meant that they were able to, previously, what will happen is someone calls in and says, um, when are you coming into this area? Or I have a challenge in this particular area, it gives you the address. Now you have to send a request to the network team. But now, moving from network through the geomarketing team, we were able to at least provide some easy way of visualizing and communicating the information. So this is what we see here, and a lot more, showing us the hotspots, the different technologies. So here, you see where 2G is, 3G, and then 4G technology. And this was actually the, the basis of us planning. So planning wasn't happening on purely a network side, but planning was happening on a strategic level that is between business and technology. That means the network planning team. So in all of this, you can see how we are bridging the two um, or more divisions. So now with the evolution also comes the rollout into more and more divisions. Talk about the famous fiber rollout. Previously, when we started, we we're just looking at GSM uh, mobile devices and that was it. Now we got to the environment of fiber rollout to homes, which was even more totally a new area to us. Because now, unlike GSM, where you're connecting with the people on the phone, getting to know their behaviors on the phone through some analytics, this time around, you needed to understand where the potential is, what kind of facilities, because very often, and I'm sure most of you can relate to this, you know some residential areas where even before doing analysis, you would anticipate that might need fiber rollout. But this enabled us to gather all the information, look at where people were using heavy data, overlay this over um, income levels using average revenue per user to determine we could infer that these people were potential fiber to home users. Therefore, this really helped us when we started the fiber rollout. And again, it was timely just when in 2018, we had rolled out the enterprise um, level of our GIS. So here we were, we were able to collect data, whatever data the fiber team had collected, we brought it into the GIS, we overlaid with more information for some of the gated communities, we were able to identify where the ECG pool was and then the, the, the specific fiber um, access routes, being able to understand where they were. And even recently during the COVID time, when, I mean, we had reduced sales. We even introduced the sales team into the collector so that whilst they went and they sold, they collected information. And this kind of information was information about maybe house ownership, information about maybe their, their specific demands. And you can imagine how this rich source of data was used to further um, analyze potential or other potential areas of fiber demand. So the evolution was this way. So this, these are just a few pictures to give us how understanding of some of the application. One critical area, another critical area that the GIS significantly helped us was in the area of FinTech, in the FinTech area, uh, mobile money. This again, in a country on the part of the world where more people are being encouraged to bank through um, very basic levels, this became a way of understanding where the potential um, revenue activities, business units would be, the, the movement of funds. 
Where do we roll out? Where are the agents? Who are those who are not using um, mobile money yet? And then where are they? Because you can see the movements of funds. But then to help you better roll out or put um, agents into strategic location, the GIS really became helpful. And again, with this one too, we applied collector again. What it meant was we had a lot of agents scattered all over the country. But the challenge now was we hadn't collected the database of all of these agents. The agents are like, uh, let's call them the mini banks where you can transact, send money, receive money, and whatever um, point of engagement that you required on the mobile money interface. These were physical locations. And we had to also collect all that information and some more details. So this was what was done. And within a period of about maybe three to six months, that was in 2019, the team was able to collect the agents, merchants, and other financial related indicators and brought it into the GIS. And you can imagine how this helped in reprioritizing. And of course, like um, the agents being able to rank them. I recall when the ranking started, said, oh, these are maybe high, medium, low agents. What we told the financial, the FinTech team was, the MFS team was, well, it would just be unfair to just rank them by medium, high, low without looking at the socioeconomic impact. So this is where, again, a layer of socioeconomic indicators helped us to reprioritize these agents and merchants, just so that there is consistency in their approach or some level of fairness in how they are classified. So these are some of the examples of how we were able to bring in more data to do analysis. I mentioned this earlier about bringing um, our GIS application to into the hands of our customer service agents. So now they also had visibility. And this meant that it wasn't information that was moving from a purely technical network or engineering team directly to the customer, but it became user-friendly. At least at the um, frontliners could be able to type in basic information all within the online application to be able to serve customers better. And then on the strategic side, as I mentioned, all of this brought the business assets and also the opportunity in the market into perspective on the enterprise level. So at the click of a button, different functions could now relate. And it was interesting in meetings when some of these uh, maps are come up, some of these dashboards are open, the kind of debates immediately people can identify and pinpoint. And you see some of the sales agents looking at colleagues that that's your area, this is what we need to do. So it brought some level of transparency and people realize that, that you know, sometimes there's the phobia that one, this, this would expose too much, but they also realize that it gave them the opportunity to also know where the um, areas to aggressively attack or push more products and services were. So it was a win-win. So it, it wasn't so much of fear to say that, yes, your boss is monitoring you and you'll be penalized and so on and so forth. That was not the case. There was really good buy-in. And on a day-to-day -day basis or on a, sometimes um, weekly or monthly, the dashboards were also available and um, opportunity maps were also shared. And each of the functions could now look at their KPIs and know how they were performing. And then from the insights and analytics team, they could now give a better uh, or a deeper understanding as, as to what could possibly be leading to an increase or decrease or decline in some of the KPIs. So to conclude, I would say that GIS is a journey. Looking at what we started off from 2009, and right through to 
2017 and even to 2018, it didn't start um, over one day. It started with little steps. And those little steps were from the desktop, maturing, online, and then enterprise-wide. And even with that, the evolution still continues. And so for everybody who is looking at evolving their GIS, the, the, the feedback, the recommendation is start small, evolve, create partnerships. And these partnerships, we are talking about divisions from the technical side through to the commercial. So it's a combination of business strategy and then the GIS strategy, which is the evolution. So first of all, discover what do we want to use the GIS for? Very often people stop in one function and that is it and then draw the lines and then pass on information. But you saw how our GIS was at the heart of the business that was in marketing. I'm not saying that automatically you should go and look for your marketing division and then put a GIS there, but it depends on where your heart is. Yes, the, the heart of the, um, your company could be within um, the network side, but there should be partnership. How do you create linkage? from one division to the other. That's how we evolve into the big data environment. So first of all, discover, explore, where the explore need, means that, what are the needs? What do we want to do? And so in line with our vision, in line with our mission to ensure that everybody who deserves a, a better life, a brighter life has to have this communication tool in their hand, depending on what level of technology is required. And then the developments, small, simple applications. Look at how we started off from collector and there was excitement and people were visualizing and then we went onto the dashboards and then we continue. In fact, we continue to scale up. I believe that one day, um, and even our customers today, if you wanted fiber in your home, there are simple applications that when you click, it shows you your house versus where the the fiber rule out is, so it's a partnership. And then the engagement, which also goes closely with the development, management, support, enterprise awareness, awareness not in terms of standing out there and speaking or there's something called GIS, but through the application, making it simple. Today, if somebody asked me that, oh, how can I use the GIS? I said, look, you use Excel a lot. There's a direct link. You can click maybe when you finish your database, you can click and you see a map version to enable you visualize. Things like that, very simple. Customer focus. Once, and I think at the end of the day, all we are trying to do is deliver customer experience. So if we are able to shift from an insider perspective only into a customer focus, then the GIS sits well. So you realize where the strategy sits in the business strategy and the GIS strategy all coming in. And of course, from that point, you diffuse. In fact, this is a cycle. So it can continue, you explore, you continue, and you sustain. So you review, you revise, and you reposition. And we are still at that point where we continue. And I'm sure monetization soon should be the other um, level by which we carry out. And monetization, sometimes when you talk monetization, people have the phobia or the fear of um, customer data being breached. No, it is to give that high level anonymized and aggregated view of areas that as a business or as a country, we ought to roll out, we ought to support because remember utilities now is the empowering tool. So as we as a business move from being a telco operator into being that digital operator, these are some of the ways by which we are ensuring that we are transforming our GIS. So I think that is it. So customer experience, operational excellence, and mission driven. Those are the fundamentals that will help you grow your GIS. Thank you very much for your time.